Thank you. Good morning, colleagues. Um, what I intend to do is just to uh, give you a very short presentation of the content of the blueprint in relation to uh, cross-cutting uh, aspects. And, uh, of course, uh, a lot of what you have heard already is quite cross-cutting because there are many, many linkages between the different uh, policy options which uh, have been discussed so far. Uh, but let's say these are more cross-cutting than the others. And um, we have grouped them in uh, three uh, big categories. One concerns innovation and knowledge. The second one is about governance. And the third one is about policy integration, which we, indeed has been already debated uh, quite a bit. Uh, concerning innovation and um, knowledge, of course, you are familiar with the uh, innovation partnerships that the European Commission launched last May and uh, uh, the work kicked off by the high-level steering group in September and the strategic implementation plan, as been mentioned yesterday, is due to uh, adoption, to be adopted in December this year. The uh, partnership tries to uh, focus on some of the blueprint priorities to develop innovative tool, if you like, to deliver on the blueprint priorities. So there's a close link between the partnership on water. And um, uh, the same applies to the partnership on agriculture, productivity and uh, sustainability, which in the Commission is under the lead of um, uh, DG Agriculture. Um, then a second element is, is WISE. Of course, you are familiar with the water information system for Europe. It's been around for a while. Member states have used it also for their reporting activities of the rib basin management plans. And uh, uh, the question here is more about um, how to improve WISE, how to make it more interoperable with national databases, how to make sure that the necessary information for the decision makers is available at the right time and at the right decision making uh, level. Uh, the third element is streamlining reporting and statistics uh, requirement. Um, there is a, an activity which um, needs to be accomplished under the CIS, and it looks in particular at the issue of harmonizing reporting cycles under the Urban Wastewater Directive, the Nitrous Directive, the Water Framework Directive, that have different cycles, four years in some cases, six years under the WFD, and how to make this uh, uh, indeed um, compatible and in order to simplify uh, the administrative exercise. Um, also in the field of knowledge base there is uh, an issue which has been mentioned yesterday uh, in relation to the hydroeconomic model that has been developed by uh, the Joint Research Center of um, the Commission. Uh, this is a tool that is um, supposed to help water managers to deliver a uh, cost-effective uh, solution. In fact, it's uh, supposed to help them in making the choices for the most cost-effective uh, measures. But of course, it's, um, uh, it's a bit of a pilot at the moment. It needs uh, a lot of uh, refining, additional work, additional uh, information. And then the last element on this slide is the continuation of the uh, work on science policy interface. You know that this is an ongoing activity and uh, an activity that um, needs to continue because, of course, we always, we continuously need uh, science, the results of new projects, to feed into the policy so that the policy can adjust to technical and scientific uh, development. The matter is more how to make this more effective um, under the CIS. The second uh, big group of uh, issues in the cross-cutting uh, part of the blueprint uh, relate to governance. And um, a lot of what has been discussed relate to governance uh, directly or indirectly. We discussed what recounts, for instance, and they also relate uh, uh, to governance, the basic uh, information that then allows you, for instance, uh, for the, uh, the allocation of uh, uh, of water to the various um, uh, stakeholders, but here we focus more specifically on structural elements of the governance uh, uh, and possibilities to improve it. In terms of learning from each other, we thought it would be useful to offer the possibility of having a, a peer review system for the river basin management plans where uh, the river basin districts which are more advanced can actually um, contribute their experience, share their knowledge with those that are less advanced and the uh, uh, commission on the basis of the in-depth assessment of the plans of the member states that we have carried out could uh, facilitate this process, could uh, suggest, uh, for instance, uh, that some uh, river basin district volunteer uh, to help others. 
Um, then uh, there is the issue of inspection and surveillance. Of course, this is not an issue related to water policy only. It's a wider issue uh, concerning the enforcement of uh, environmental uh, policy. And uh, the Commission is at the moment looking into uh, an assessment of the existing recommendation uh, so it's um, a soft law instrument uh, um, at European level on inspection and surveillance uh, to see how this can be improved and made uh, more effective. So we can expect some proposal from the Commission. The exact uh, uh, nature or legal nature has not uh, been decided yet and will be subject to an impact assessment. Uh, and then the last element on governance concerns uh, country-specific recommendation in the European semester. You know that there is the European semester process and uh, uh, there are a number of recommendations which are proposed by the Commission, adopted by the European Council and uh, uh, then uh, addressed to the Member States in order to improve the economic governance uh, at national level. And uh, of course uh, there are close linkages between water policy and many economic sectors. So what we will be trying to do is to identify recommendations that offer win-win from the economic and the environmental uh, point of view so that uh, they deliver, uh, they contribute to deliver water policy objectives while actually also uh, helping generating growth and jobs. And the last element uh, on cross-cutting issues is um, integration. Uh, there has been a debate already here on um, uh, including the cross under cross compliance under the CAP the Water Framework Directive. What uh, we are not really discussed is what does that mean in practical terms. The Water Framework Directive is a 70 page long, very technical uh, directive, extremely difficult to understand. Uh, I can imagine that a farmer who gets old of it uh, uh, would be a little scared uh, in uh, hearing that uh, this should go into cross-compliance. But of course here we're talking about some very limited selected provisions which are uh, to be very concretely defined in order for them to be um, uh, added to the cross-compliance mechanism. Um, so the issue is what are the measures to be added. Uh, then I've mentioned already the European semester, it's repeated in these slides because of, of course it's uh, potentially relevant for integration as it is for governance. And then the last element I wanted to mention is uh, awareness raising tools on water consumption. In the previous presentation the issue of uh, labeling globally traded goods um, has been uh, mentioned and uh, a caveat was, was um, put forward about uh, uh, the limitation for instance of the water footprint. We are very well aware of this limitation and the blueprint does not propose the water footprint uh, as a policy tool but uh, rather as a, an awareness uh, raising tool. There are other tools like um, uh, certification scheme uh, uh, like the European water stewardships uh, and uh, several others that indeed can contribute to make people aware of the impact of their lifestyle and behaviors on uh, uh, water, uh, the water environment. So to conclude uh, the questions for discussion, this is a subset of what you see in the um, uh, background document uh, which has been streamlined in order to facilitate the discussion, cover the three aspects here. What, uh, what is needed to improve knowledge base, knowledge sharing and uh, the wise um, information system in Europe? What can be done in order to improve governance? Uh, um, uh, are peer reviews useful? And uh, finally, what should be the measures that uh, could be added from WFD into the CAP cross compliance or what else can we do to uh, help um, integrating WFD objective in cross compliance? Thank you.